Hi guys, welcome to my channel once again. This is Bat Okwithola. My name is Mujala Lua. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. So today, like I promised in the previous video, I want to show you a real life chart sheet. And I'm hoping that it will help you put things in perspective from the last video. So if you haven't seen the last video on charges, please do well to see it, especially before this video, so that you can understand what we're talking about and so that you can be carried along. So like I said also in the previous video, um, the things that you would see on this chart sheet might be slightly different from what obtains in your own jurisdiction. But I can assure you that, you know, the differences are not material. They are just slight differences uh, depending on how, you know, they have elected to draft charges in your own jurisdiction. Essentially, the basic features of a charge sheet are largely the same. And that's what you should look out for. Now, I understand that, you know, the um, examples and the formats that they use in law school, especially in law school textbooks, are very different. So if you are a law student, particularly in law school, I encourage you to please read your textbooks and listen to your lecturers as opposed to following this particular chart sheet. So if you've watched the previous video, it will help you understand charges as a law student and it will help you remember the essential features and more particularly the four scenes of drafting charges which you must not commit. Once you have that done, you just need to pay attention to what your lecturers prefer or what the textbooks are telling you about how it is now drafted. That is the format for drafting it. So that might be the only difference between, you know, what obtains in your school and what is good for your education and what we have in this video. But in the jurisdiction where I practice, this is what we use in my jurisdiction. So it might be different jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but I assure you that the differences are not material. I hope you understand this little um, preamble that I've given. So let's get into it. Let me show you what a charge sheet looks like in real life. Please come along. So as usual for every process, every court process, we have the heading of the court and then the court number and the charge number. So usually when um, the prosecution is filing for the first time, it would not have a charge number yet because that would be assigned at the registry after it's been filed and assigned to a court. So it will not have the charge number and the court number. But after it's been filed and assigned to a court, it will have those two things. So we can as well assume that this charge has been filed and assigned to a particular court, that's court 7. And then, of course, we would have the parties between the state as complainant and Femi Johnson as the defendant. Now, the introduction goes thus. At the session of this court sitting in Ibadan, holding on the dash day of dash 2021, the court is informed by the director of public prosecutions on behalf of the state that... Now, you'd remember that I said that, you know, information is filed at the High Court by the Attorney General is empowered by the ACJA to file an information on behalf of the state. So it's the Attorney General that prosecutes for the state at the High Court. That one Femi Johnson, that's the defendant, is charged with the following offenses. Count one, that you, Femi Johnson... On or about the 5th day of March 2021, at about 14.00 hours in the barrier area of Ibadan, the Ibadan Judicial Division did unlawfully burgle the house of one Fakunle Thomas, barrier area Ibadan, and thereby committed an offence contrary to and punishable under Section 411 of the Criminal Code, Cap 38, Volume 11, Laws of Your State, 2000. Now, let's pick out the features. The first is that you, that's how to start a charge. That's what most jurisdictions in Nigeria use. So you say that you, Femi Johnson, that's the name of the accused person or the defendant, on or about the 5th day of March 2021, that's the date the offense was committed, at about 1,400 hours that's the time the offense was committed. And I said that time is very essential because it could literally change, you know, the flavors or the content or, you know, the effect, the punishment of an offense. So, for instance, in this particular offense, 
this uh, crime was committed at 2 a.m. And that's why it's punish. It's um, um, and that's why it's um filed at the I. And that's why it's filed at the I court. If it had happened during the day, it would not be filed at the I court because it can be tried at the magistrate court. So if you check section four one one, it shows you that you know it's breaking and entering when it's during the day, and it can be charged at the I court because the punishment is um, fourteen years. But now, when it's done at night, it becomes burglary and the punishment is life imprisonment. And that's why it's filed at the high court. So pay attention to the time the offense was committed. So at 1400, I was in the Bear area of Ibadan. So that's um, the place where the offense was committed. And then in the Ibadan Judicial Division, very important. Because jurisdiction goes to the root of every offense and every matter before the court so if it did not happen in the court's jurisdiction the court cannot try it so let's say it happened at a keja it will not come under the Ibadan judicial division it will come under the keja judicial division and then it will be tried in a legal state high court that's the keja high court so that's why you know the place where the offense was committed is very important and thereby committed an offence contrary to and punishable under Section 411 of the Criminal Code. Now, we've stated it like this because Section 411 states the offence and the punishment. So there are some offences where, you know, there's a different section that states the offence and a different section that prescribes the punishment. So it will be contrary to section so-so in that case and punishable under section so-so if that's the case. But here, the same section 411 prescribes the offence and the punishment. So that's why we have written contrary to and punishable under section 411 of the criminal code. Cap 38, volume 11, laws of your state. 2000 so if you know we were punishing based on another law that's the law that we would cite but here we're punishing under the criminal code the criminal code is one in nigeria but you know different states have um, adopted it into their laws and that's why we are particularly describing it based on the your state laws and how it's been adopted you know seamlessly into our laws count two that you femi johnson on about the 5th day of March 2021, at about 1400 hours in the Bera area of Ibadan, the Ibadan Judicial Division did steal one Toyota Corolla model engine, value unknown, one plasma TV valued 180,000, three rechargeable standing fans valued um, 60,000, a set of home feeder valued to 50,000, and two air conditioners valued 50,000, properties of one Fakunle Thomas and thereby committed an offence contrary to section 316 and punishable under section 390. So you see what I was talking about before of the criminal code, cap 38, that's chapter 38, volume 11, laws of your state, 2000. So this count also describes, this count also, you know, describes the offence in details. So you'd see that, that you... That's Femi Johnson, the accused person, the one who has committed the offence. Fifth day of March, when the, offense, the date the offence was committed, 1400 hours, the time the offence was committed, the area, that's Berry area, in the Ibadan Judicial Division, and the things that the person stole. Now, the value of those things are important if they can be obtained. Because sometimes monetary value determines the court where the offense will be tried. So if it's 10 million and less, it can be tried at the magistrate court. Or if it's more than 10 million, it's now without the jurisdiction of the magistrate court and it has to go to the high court. But this one is at the high court despite being lower because of the first count, which is life imprisonment and which can only be tried at the high court. So let's say that count one was not life imprisonment. Let's say it was um, 14 years or seven years or a lesser, you know, sentence prescribed. This would go to the magistrate court because the monetary value of the things stolen are under 10 million naira. So that's another thing to note. So where 
um, the prosecution cannot ascertain the monetary value. Of course, you know, they would ask the um, victim of the offense. Usually, they produce receipts of purchase for the prosecution to ascertain at the police station now that's it's that happens at the police stage at the reporting and investigation stage so usually they produce receipts to ascertain the value of uh, the real value the purchase value of each item so once that can be ascertained it is put in the charge as well so you can see what i spoke about in contrary to one section and punishable under another section when charges are drafted Charges are drafted based on the punishment section. So that means that you talk about the section prescribing the offense and the section punishing the offense. Very important. And then we have dated this dash day of dash 2021. So a charge must be dated. Very important. It must be dated. And that's usually the date, you know, the prosecution uh, drafted, um, you know, printed it out for filing because the um, registry stamp will bear the date it was filed so it must be dated and then we have the um, name of the drafting officer livingstone om state council for director of public prosecutions so because the director of public prosecutions is the one informing the court of this charge is the one bringing this charge on behalf of the attorney general because his office is tied to and works under the attorney general the state council who works under him too must sign the charge as working under him and as for him. So that's why you have state council for director of public prosecutions. So any other officer in his department can do it also. But they have to, you know, state that, you know, it's for director of public prosecutions just for ease of identification of whose authority the charge is being brought by. Or upon so that's basically what you would see on the charge sheet if the counts are more than this you go on you go on until you've exhausted all the counts of the offense that you want to draft and note that you know we did not put you know two offenses in one count you can see that you know burglary is in one count and stealing is in count two so you cannot put the two together they do not work that way so we have fulfilled all righteousness we have complied with you know the rules of drafting and we have avoided committing the sins of ambiguity the sins of duplicity and the sins of misjoinder of offenses and misjoinder of offenders we couldn't have committed misjoinder of offenders anyways because you know we only have one offender femi johnson in this church sheet. so that's it i hope that when you watch the two videos you know in conjunction one with the other you're able to appreciate and, you know, fully understand how charges work, how they are drafted and the principles guiding the drafting of charges in Nigeria. That's all I have for you today. I will always see you in my very next video. Please do not forget to like the video if you loved what you've just seen and leave me comments in the comment section. Let me hear from you. And please, please do subscribe to the channel. I will always see you in my very next video. Toodles.